Skyjack's Log, New Horizon, April 24th, Entry 5. I can't say I've ever had a day any worse than today. Where in the name of Celestia's great son do I begin? I suppose there's the fact that we were set to make an absolute fortune. Now that we aren't still going to be rich, it's just that there's been... complications. First, all the jackpots dropped significantly. Significantly, because some pony went and knocked all the damn pillars over. Things were supposed to be made of diamond, and yet they shattered like glass. And that ain't the worst part. When the cooling talisman went off on one, it went off on all of them. It must have been some sort of connection between them or something. Raven had a fit when she found out. I've never seen that mare so angry in my life. And I tell you, I was terrified. She nearly had some pony thrown overboard because of it. And I still don't know if it was any of the Pegasus crew that did it. I just hope it was. To think that she'd let some pony fall to their death because of this. Well, I know we ain't the most honorable bunch, but Crew's family. That's how it's always been. It wasn't just anger in her, though. She was afraid. I saw it, and I know that's not something she lets show often. Well, now I have no idea what to think. I suppose it had to do with that black orb. I don't think any pony was expecting the thing to roll out of the pillar because it smashed to bits. Now, both parties that got splashed by the stuff are in the brig. I don't see what the big deal is. Not a lick of that stuff got on any pony before, it just seemed to wither and die all on its own. Still, I ain't been down to the brig, so I have no idea what state any pony's in down there. As for the rest of the village, or the pillars, well, they're still pretty weird. I mean, just this morning, I thought I saw something move inside one when I walked by. Almost like it was trying to get at me. They really just give me the creeps, and now we can't stop them from thawing out. So I want to just get back and get rid of them as soon as possible. It's only a few days till we reach Iron Sail, anyway. Then, whoever contracted us to get these cursed things can have them, the ones that are left, that is, and give us what we're owed. At least all these bits are still worth the trouble. This has been one heck of a late job. We just have to pass over Equestria first. Pretty insufferable place, if you ask me. Every pony who lives there is perfectly... It's almost like they forget everything else going outside their pretty little sanctuary. Celestia forbid anything ever really got loose down there. They wouldn't even stand a chance. This... this is stupid. I should never have been... all this... I... Probably collapsed onto the floor. Looking down at her four hooves and an uncontrollable flood of doubt and regret escaped her mouth. Each pony still breathing had to gasp for breath as their bodies demanded far more air than their mouths could supply. Running. All of it seemed to be meaningless now. Running for what felt like forever as something chased them through the darkness, like a shark through the water. You know, pony knew what to do. How did no pony react in a situation like this? Trapping the thing had failed. Outright attacking it had only resulted in another pony's gruesome death. It had all led to a point that not one of them dare do anything to the thing but run. Ultimately, there was only one option now, and every pony knew it. Now, Twilight, you listen to me. What happened back there wasn't your fault. Whatever this thing is, it... It's just sick. It's an abomination, it... Applejack began, taking the quivering mass that had been Twilight by the shoulders, only for her own words to fail her. Not my fault. Don't kid yourself, Applejack. She'd still be here if it weren't for me. They all would. Well, I'd sobbed, tears mixing with a dead, dried crimson that ran down the gash on her forehead. I was the one who went into that ship. If I'd just moved on and left well enough alone, none of this would have happened. And that's not true, Twilight. Some pony else would have found that thing, eventually. Or it would have hatched on its own. I don't know. All I know for sure is that something like this could have spread all over Equestria in no time. Applejack said collecting herself as she let go of Twilight. She's right. 
This thing clearly has some kind of parasite. The egg, its blood, that weird black stuff. All of this must be part of a life cycle. The slime must be what makes them, only it needs a living host to grow from first. Starlight elaborated cautiously, stepping forwards. Are y'all saying another of the darn things is coming out of rarity? The way it did Pinky? Applejack has said, with a frail concern. I'm saying there could be far more than that. I mean, it took Rainbow too, and we just left Fluttershy's body. Then there was the crew of the whole ship. Plus, I don't think that just one of those had one of those eggs either. Starlight added, fear causing her tone to shiver as much as her body did. You're right. Each one of those shattered things. The shells inside there must have been more eggs. My Celestia. How could I have been so stupid? Those things could be everywhere. Twilight exclaimed, smacking herself over the head with a hoof. Spike placed a claw on her shoulder as the idea sank into each of their heads. The kingdom being covered by naught but hideous black slime and the dark, flickering entities that spawned. No. That ain't gonna happen, because we're all gonna get out of here and we're gonna warn some pony. Applejack declared with a hoof. Twilight looked at her, sniffling her best as she tried her hardest to pull her thoughts back together and stay strong. I suppose if I could get a message to Princess Celestia, she could do something. But all my writing stuff's back at home in the castle. And then that's where we're heading right now. No more trying to fight. Thing we can't. Applejack said, stepping back from Twilight. And I promise that no pony else is gonna... She began, but her words cut off as her green eyes went wide. Applejack? Twilight began, but then she and every pony else froze as they stared at the paralyzed farm pony. A glistening stream of sticky, wet goo seeped down her hat and onto her shoulders, as something big shifted in the shadows above her. Twy. The brief shudder was the only sound to escape Applejack's nose before she gasped and a large, bladed spine burst through her neck and showered everyone with gore. Twilight screamed as the hot spray of blood struck her face. Starlight fell to the floor, as did Spike, as Applejack's struggling body was heaved effortlessly up into the air and right into the glowing crown of lights that marked the creature's position. Inches below sat the distended mandibles and glistening teeth of its uh, slavering maw. The farm pony's gargling struggled as it was cut off by another bladed limb thrust into the back of her head and she became naught but a twitching rag as the beast's limbs reached her apart like nothing more than a wet tissue. Applejack! Twilight called as the beast gave an ear-rending shriek and pulled Applejack's tattered corpse into the shadows, with a sharp hiss disappearing from the sight of the flash. The only thing Twilight caught as she leaned forwards in empty air and she fell to the stone with a pitiful grunt as Applejack's hat drifted down atop her, its rar a rim marked with a dark crimson splatter. Applejack! Applejack! Twilight continued to whisper as she looked up, tears streaming from her face more than ever as she banged her hoof onto the stone in frustration. Applejack! Twilight! Twilight, stop! You can't do anything! Starlight proclaimed as she magically pulled the sobbing alicorn back and wrapped her hooves around her as she reassured her as best she could. For a long moment, they stayed like that as Twilight's fear and remorse finally consumed her, and Starlight tried her hardest to block out her own dread. Spike just moved behind the pillar, his own sorrow masked by the fact that his eyes continually scoured the gloom for any sign of the glowing hunter. Then, after a long moment, Twilight finally sniffed and pulled herself back together, and pulled herself away from Starlight looking at the terrified eyes of her student as if begging her to say this was some kind of sick nightmare. Twilight? Twilight? Wh what do we do? Spike asked, his voice as much of a shivering wreck as his body. Twilight wiped her muzzle with a trembling hoof and glanced back into the darkness that had become alive and stolen her friend, eyes finally coming to rest on Applejack's bloodied hat. I... 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 I don't know. She stuttered weakly, as she picked up the last remaining part of her friend in her four hooves. 
The baby dragon didn't give a response. He simply tapped his claws together. Starlight, on the other hoof, looked between the pair. Cold dread seeping through her veins as she saw the look of pure defeat on Twilight's face. We can't just sit here, we... Starlight began in a panic, then paused to collect herself as best she could. How far is the main door? Can't we just teleport out now? Back to Ponyville? Spike added with equal fear. At their blunt of questions, Twilight looked up. I don't know. This place looks completely different at night, and my horn's too damaged for any kind of complex spell. Just think, Twilight. You know this place far better than me. If any pony has a chance of getting us out, it's you. Starlight assured her. Fear demanding her tone turn into a soft whisper to a firm statement. Twilight's whole body shivered, her blood-stained expression contorting to a turbulent mix of emotions as they went at each other like savage timber wolves in her mind. Then she finally looked to her two remaining friends, brow furrowing. All right, stay close and follow me, she stated, and Starlight levitated Spike on the alicorn's back as she fell in line behind her. Their eyes were cast into the darkness behind them as Twilight watched the gloom ahead. Silence once again gripped the ruins, even as the storm seemed to stop and take its breath as the air became so dense a pair of scissors could cut it with ease. The remaining gloom remained motionless, save for the occasional flash or flicker. For any pony seeing it, it was a deadly game of deciphering whether it was just a trick of the mind or the deadly entity's vibrant lure. Once again, the walk through the eerie shadows felt like an eternity, the path winding down the great spiral stairs and through cracks and crevices in the stone that could not be part of the original design. Then, in the middle of a corridor lined by ghostly sets of black pony armor, Twilight paused, almost as if causing, uh, almost causing starlight to leap out of her skin as she backed into her. What? What is it? She whispered, turning to look at the puzzled alicorn. I don't know. This looks familiar, but... Uh, I have no idea where we are. She groaned, four hooves pressing to her temples. What? You said you knew the way out, Twilight. We can't be lost. Spike responded, fear once again surging into his tone like a flood. That only seemed to make Twilight's dread grow all the more. However, as she paced desperately trying to search her mind for the answers while desperately keeping her terror at bay... I don't know, Spike. I'm trying, okay? She exclaimed. Then her head fell slightly. I need you to know that I'll never let anything happen to you. Okay? She added, her voice crackling with an unsettling, terrified madness. Before she could continue, Starlight moved to Twilight's side, lifted the princess's chin with a hoof, putting on her best smile. Come on, Twilight. Don't give up on us now. We still need you. She said simply doing all she could to hide her desperation. All Twilight did was look into the darkness ahead emptily, as Starlight swallowed nervously. Twilight? Her meek words did not better uh, to enter Twilight's mind than they did the first time. It was the best indication any pony had that there was any hope of escape. Accepting the fact, Starlight reluctantly moved back to her place behind Twilight, only to scream, the sight of glowing frills flashed only seconds before the monstrous set of glistening black claws reached out of the gloom to strike her. Instinct drove the unicorn to duck, as the claws smashed into the one set of armor, cutting a deep gash to the metal as it clattered to the floor. Before she could even think about anything else, she sent a wild blast of blue fire right up to where she could only guess the thing was hidden. Illuminating for mere seconds, she saw a sleek black body of the thing as it wa was wet, Rubbery skin was scorched by the fire. Then the thing recoiled from the flames with a pained hiss and vanished with a bright flash of blue light. Yet this time it didn't go far. Run! Starlight called, and without another word she took off. Spike and Twilight only inches behind her. There was shifting in the gloom, then a horrific shriek as the creature charged after them. No more than its bright lights were visible but the sound of his large body slamming the armored stands behind it and the steps beating on the stone were all too real. Then came the ripping chatter of its frills sounding as if they magically darted up along the walls towards them. 
In the lead, all Starlight could do was think about each one as a piece of tapestry. Each one was another thing between her and the monster, but it was a futile hope, and soon enough the sound of the thing's breath was almost upon her as she panted. Without thinking or moving more than a second, Starlight took a sh sharp right down another hall, hoping to Celestia that Twilight would follow. She didn't have time to look back, no matter how much she wanted to, for the sound of Twilight's exhausted breath and rapid clopping of her hooves were still thankfully close behind her. It was after only a few moments that she began to realize that they might be the only set of steps that were pursuing her, and she dared to stop running. Twilight almost collided with her student's rump as she came to an abrupt halt and instantly looked back into the darkness. There was no sign of their hunter, and at that, both of them had little choice but to fall against the wall as they gasped for breath. You think it's still after us? Spike asked, frantically looking between the two mares and the darkness behind him. Twilight opened her muzzle as if to respond, but Spike's words could not have come at a worse time. The darkness flickered and pulsated blue lights, accompanied by an equally chilling echo as it slowly stalked down towards them. Both Twilight and Starlight turned, backing away as fast as they could. All the while, neither dared take their eyes off the thing. Each one of them felt something that made their hearts stop. The cold touch of jagged stone met their haunches, and only one brief look back solidified the fact that the tunnel ahead had collapsed. Caught between a wall and their ravenous hunter, panic began to burn like a wildfire with an every pony. Then the bluish glow vanished rendering the dark creature invisible. No, 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 no. Please, come on, there has to be a way through. Starlight begged as she beat her hooves against the stone and tried to rip at the thick wall with her magic. Her efforts only resulted in more rocks falling into place, yet her frantic struggle was only interrupted by Twilight as the Olicorn called out. There! Get out there! Looking to where Twilight was pointing, Starlight could make out a small crack in the ruined wall just big enough for some pointer to crawl through. Before any of them could argue, Twilight shoved Spike through the hole and motioned for Starlight to go after them. You want to go there? But what if there's more of those things in there? Or it's another dead end, or... The baby dreading panicked as Starlight pushed him past and peered into the small crawl space. Looks clear, Spike. Follow me, I'll go first. She volunteered and looked at Twilight. All the Alicorn did was give her a small smile of appreciation. Then there was another low hiss in the shadows. It became clear that the hunter wasn't oblivious to the new revelation, and its glow appeared again as it darted forwards. Spike looked between the hole and Twilight with a pleading look as Starlight crawled inside. Go, Spike. I'll be right behind you, Twilight instructed, pushing him into the hole with her hind hoof and backing up against it. Twilight! The dragon called desperately. Before it could do anything, Starlight's magic pulled him back. Tears streamed from the unicorn's face as she struggled to squirm through the dusty tunnel of jagged rock, all the while dragging the struggling spike away from the closest friend he'd ever had. From the darkness outside the confined space, there was a series of weak purple flashes, then a bright blue burst of light and a fearsome shriek as Twilight screamed. Her cry of terror was torn shut. Uh, cut off by a wet gasp. Starlight could crawl no more as she heard her mentor's voice fade into the gloom. Her horn's glow faded as she released Spike. Behind her, the dragon sat motionlessly, and Starlight struggled to turn her head back to look at him. A part of her longed to see the lavender alicorn come crawling through triumphantly through the darkness. There was nothing but a dead stillness. Then the dust fluttered and the whole tunnel seemed to quiver as the air shifted. One brief flicker sparked from the entrance hole, and the sight of those quivering jaws caught Starlight's gaze as the thing forced its way into the tunnel after them. She telekinetically grabbed Spike, and then he urged, other than to crawl as fast as she could, left her as she struggled through the tight rock tunnel. Tears flooded her eyes as she begged Celestia for any hope, any salvation. Yet even as she verbally whimpered and pleaded, nothing came but the closing walls, and the clawing beast as it relentlessly dragged itself after them. Then she felt moist air upon her face, and looked ahead to see a small break in the rock, the tiniest glimmer of hope. With all the strength she had, she left, and she wiggled her way through the opening. 
teeth bared as she struggled. The rock-sharp edges cut at her sides as she squeezed through and dust stung her weeping eyes. But then, against all odds, she broke out in the damp air and heaved herself free of the hole with a deep breath. Starlight! Starlight, help! called Spike, his voice muffled by the rock. Without thought, Starlight spun back to the small opening and pulled the dragon's head free with her magic. She reached him with a hoof, wrapping it around his outstretched claw to pull him out. Then she felt something hard yank at her limb. She looked into the dragon's wide, terrified eyes, as he was torn from her gasp and dragged into the hole with a painful cry and a scattering of dust. Spike! Spike! Starlight called out loudly as she dove at the hole, hooves digging at the rock in a futile effort to dig him back out. Yet it was too late, and after only a few seconds, Starlight collapsed back and curled up into a quivering ball as she sobbed into her forehooves. She stared at the small hole expectantly, almost any moment. Now she supposed the thing would burst through the rock and finally finish what it had started. Yet before long, the seconds became minutes, and still the darkness remained still. Lifting her head, shivering, Starlight dared to take her tear-strewn eyes off the hole and look ahead. The small chamber in which she found herself was filled with musty dampness and bore a rough set of rocky walls. She was in a natural cave, far different from the smooth stone chambers of the castle. The blue light of her horn shimmered against the ever-jagged surface of the wet rock, and the sound of rushing water could be heard in the distance. Finally, she swallowed and took a staggering breath of cool air. She had no idea what to do, but she knew one thing. Water always ran outside. That weak fact was all that sustained her tormenting mind as she staggered to her hooves and simply limped slowly through the dripping wet maze of caverns. Every small movement in the corner of her eye, every shiver of her magic's light against the damp rock, and every distance sound made her jump. Her ears twitched like rutless insect wings, and her eyes spun in her skull as they darted about. Her staggering breath came out in shivering puffs of vapor, and the dampness on her coat mixed with a glistening layer of cold sweat. The air was like ice, and the water slowly pooling around her hooves didn't make the freezing sensation any better as she trembled. Then she saw it, a small dripping hole in the cavern wall. Beyond it there were swirling clouds of the storm as a swaying canopy of trees. It was a way out. A small hint of relief crossed Starlight's mind. All the while, she was forced to curl her tail close and wrap her forelimbs around herself, as the cold air forced her to shiver all the more. There was one other problem. Between her and the small escape was a gushing torrent of foamy white water. Taking a deep breath, Starlight stood, and boldly entered the rapids. Her hooves turned numb to the bitterly cold water, and she struggled to grip the slippery rock. The brutal force of the water didn't make it any easier, as the flow threatened to send her sprawling into the depths. Coughing and spitting as water leaped into her mouth, Starlight staggered and lurched forwards, her forelegs uh, snagging painfully on the rock as she desperately reached for her last glimmer of hope. Then her rear hooves slipped out from under her, and she was left clinging to the wall with no hope of pulling herself free. The last bastion of hope was stolen in a storm of gushing water, and biting rocks as Starlight was torn away from the hole and washed deep into the cold. The eerie tranquility of the silent cave, there was a loud splash. The sound bounced rhythmatically throughout the glistening walls as the disturbance of the perfect mirrors that calmed pools had become. With a deep gasp, starlight glimmer burst upward from the freezing water, her limbs kicking as she battled to stay afloat. Every muscle in her body ached and strained from exhaustion, but she dragged her bruised and battered form to the water's edge and latched on to the slippery rocks. Pulling herself free, she fell onto her back in a fit of heaving coughs and wretches. Then she went limp. The cold air remained still around her, a grave silence broken only by her frantic breathing and the sound of flowing water. She had no idea how far she'd been washed into the virtual catacomb of watery tunnels. But by now, she was pretty sure she was as far from salvation as could be. That urge to simply curl up and die crossed her mind again. What hope was there now? If the thing that so brutally hunted and killed each of her friends did not come for her, then eventually the cold, water, or starvation would claim her. 
Rolling onto her front, Starlight grimaced as she received a muzzle full of wet gravel. Yet, she wasn't dead yet. The sound of water still echoed through the ghostly chambers, and once again, she knew it must lead somewhere. With a pained groan, she forced her strained and quivering hooves to support her as she staggered upwards, brushing the wet strands of mane from her eyes. Her horn flared, and she looked around. A large pool of water sat in the center of the chamber, its surface relatively still, save for the gushing torrent that had washed her down here. Several dark tunnels led off on all sides, and above a virtual honeycomb of small holes dotted the ridged ceiling. A small trickling stream led away from the pool and off into the darkness, and Starlight swiftly followed it further down into the gloom. Even so, for what felt like hours, she was offered little more than rough rocky walls and stalagmites as she wandered endlessly through the blackness. Several vaguely smooth pillars might have been the foundations of the castle, but she had no idea where she was in relation to it. Eventually, the water at her hooves began to rise, and soon she found her legs completely submerged. Before long, she fell back against one of the walls with a weak whimper. She remained there for a long time. Every visage of hope shattered as she cried on the cold stone. Before her, the tunnel broke off into a small crevice, through which the water seemed to flow. Looking both left and right warily, Starlight pushed herself away from the wall and strode through the freezing water towards the hole. The space was tight, and for a long moment she didn't even think she'd fit through. But a determination to survive was burning within her, and that primal drive forced her to push her away between the sharp rocks. The many jagged edges bit at her cold coat, painfully cutting her skin and drawing more tears from the battered unicorn. But against all odds, she squeezed through and out into the new chamber. The moment she was free of the stone, she fell into the water. Yet, as the light of her horn illuminated the new cavern, she wished she just remained in the other tunnel. At first, the rocky walls looked to be just that. Rocks. But as the light from Starlight's magic shimmered and the dark surface came to clear view, it was easy to see it was far from simple stone. The whole wall seemed to writhe and squirm like a vast carpet of ravenous insects. Large strands of sticky black slime stretched between stalactites and stalagmites like a giant spider's web. Starlight didn't even want to think what may be standing just below the water. Yet the lack of hungry black goo consuming her legs suggested she was safe. At least for now. Looking ahead into the long tunnel, she made a great effort to avoid touching any of the walls. Yet there were mere moments of walking that became the least of her worries. The first thing Starlight heard was a weary moan, then a pained whimper, and she paused. Eyes wide as she caught a glimpse of the gurgling source's sound. Twilight? She murmured, her mind refusing to accept the image her eyes were offering her. Stuck to the wall was the ragged purple figure of her mentor, her tattered limbs bound within the black mass of slime, like a fly in a giant web. Her lavender coat looked as if it was in the process of slowly rotting away, and parts of her body caught in the slime were bloated and disfigured. Within those gigantic swollen blisters was a faint blue light, the likes of which perfectly illuminated the fetal silhouette of a grisly creature. Starlight had to fight the urge to throw up as she saw the thing shift in its parasitic womb. Meanwhile, Twilight let out a gargling groan. Starlight staggered in the water, not daring to meet her mentor's eyes. Yet, as she fell back and diverted her gaze, she found no peace. Across from Twilight, another equine figure had been almost completely corrupted by the slime. Four blistered, uh, swelled over her body, appearing already to disgorge their deadly offspring at any moment. Within the twisted black mass, the tattered remnants of a white face was just visible, its agonizing expression stretched like putty across the inky nest. Rarity, Starlight stammered, looking around to see more corrupted equine bodies strung up to incubate next generation of horrific creatures. She saw Fluttershy and Rainbow Dash, the mutilated flesh still enough to harbor the creatures dwelling within them. Directly above, she saw Applejack, or at least one half of her. Down in the water, she could barely make out another small bump of purple scales. Finally, 
around the whole place were more bubbling lumps of inky black, from each of which the distinctive forms of glowing spheres had started the nightmare, began to sprout. It... it bred, Starlight mumbled to herself. The gruesome theory she'd pitched to Twilight mere hours ago was becoming horrific. Starlight, came a weary voice, and as if to meet her ears, Starlight dared to look at its source. The moment her eyes fell again upon Twilight, its mangled form, however, the lilac unicorn gagged and retched sickeningly. My Celestia, my Celestia, my Celestia, she exclaimed, her breath escaping like a panicked fit. I, 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 I need to get out. I, Twilight, tell me what to do, she stammered, fear stealing all reason as she edged closer to Twilight's dissolving body as she dared. Starlight, you, you need to, Twilight groaned weakly, and Starlight fell back as a lavender unicorn, as one remaining eye locked onto her, the look within begging for relief. Kill me. Those words sent a shudder through Starlight's spine that she could only imagine felt the same as lightning bolts striking her. What? No, Twilight, I, I can't, I, she stammered weakly. But that pleading look didn't leave Twilight's pained eyes. They can't get out. You have to destroy them all, the alicorn whimpered, gagging as several of the gestating monsters writhed within her distending body. Starlight dared to look around the gruesome chamber, tears streaming from her eyes. Then she looked back at her mutilated mentor, and thought of the pain and slime eating away at her Twilight nodded. I... I'm sorry, Starlight stammered, as her horn flared and a jet of flame erupted out of the... across the defiled, defiled chamber. Twilight screamed as she was burned alive, and the horrific cry of agony was drowned out by Starlight's crying and the turmoil that had gripped her mind. The stench of charred and rotting flesh filled the air as the hideous black slime was reduced to ash, as were the bodies of the others, who were all mercifully unconscious. After only a few minutes, the fire receded and Starlight was left within the silent gloom as the blackened remains of her friends slipped lazily into the water. She didn't dare look at the charred corpses, as she was sure she was going to cry into her forehooves and shiver at the idea of what she'd done. Over and over, she reminded herself the state they'd been in, but none of that spared her the other horror of what she'd been driven to do. All that changed seconds later, with an eerie whistling sound. There was a loud splash in the gloom, and Starlight's sorrow broke as she felt the water around her legs ripple. Jumping up straight, her eyes darted forward, left and right, only to see nothing but darkness. The cold water shifted again as something large moved through it, and she slowly began to back away from the direction she was sure the disturbance had come from. Whatever was there in the darkness before her didn't stop moving, yet it remained just out of sight. Then she saw a bright flickering amidst the shadows and bolted as fast as she could. She had no idea whether it was the light of her own magic or her mind playing tricks on her, but now there was little for her to care. She staggered desperately through the water. With each panicked step, it felt as if the cold water was pulling her back towards the inevitable doom. Her ears perked up as she heard a wet hiss cut through the air, a long, drawn-out sound peripherated by a series of animalistic clicks. That distinctive rotting smell entered her nostrils, and there was no doubt in her mind that at that moment it had found her, only now it was very angry. Before she could do anything more, however, the tunnel widened, and she fell forwards as one of her forehooves caught between two submerged stones. She hit the freezing water face first, barely able to see the vibrant blue flash that passed over her as her horn's light died. Pure need for air forced her to rise her head far sooner than she'd liked and she made another loud gasp as her starved lungs begged for relief. A large rock jutted out of the water before her, and she swimmed, uh, swiftly pushed herself against it, and she heaved and coughed. All the while, her eyes remained locked in the darkness of the tunnel before her, waiting for that distinctive blue light to appear and reveal those hideous teeth. Yet no such doom came. Instead, the water around Starlight's waist rippled again as something large moved in the shadows. The dripping came from the cave as it shifted and something passed 
under a set of wet stalactites. Then she heard it. In the confines, the maze of the tunnels, the rasping breath echoed as if it came from all around her. More than once, the freezing water quivered, causing Starlight's heart to skip a beat as she slowly peered over her rocky corner. There, in the center of the small cave, was another black rock illuminated from above by a weak ray of light. Perched atop it was a large serpentine beast. Its smooth black skin glinted like leather. Its incredibly long, whip-like tail snaked through the water, and a large ray of rattling spines set upon its arced back. Its slender body was supported by a pair of monstrous claws that dwarfed a far smaller pair of scythed appendages. Sprouting from behind its ribbed chest, yet nothing of that is what caught Twilight, uh, Starlight's attention in the briefest of glimpses as eternity scarred it into her terrified mind. All that did was the large thing's crested head. It was devoid of all natural features, save oozing nostrils and a shivering maw. The thing was almost like a hooked beak that twitched and shifted like a clicking of mandibles of an insect. Even so, the whole thing moved at a slow grace as water dripped over its partially illuminated body. Puffs of hot vapor and spittle were dribbling water, fleeting from its fanged mouth as it exhaled. Rivers of neon blue light swam in magnificent patterns under its translucent dark hide as a strangely beautiful betrayal of its deadly nature. And then, with a sudden hiss and a sharp flick of its head, the beast looked directly at Starlight. Instinctively, she ducked back down as fast as she could, begging Celestia that it hadn't seen her as she covered her muzzle and battled not to scream. She then sensed her hooves uh, to her raising ears, and closed her eyes as the water shifted again. She could hear its eyeless stare as it peered into the rocks as if to melt the cover away and expose her to its brutal savagery. The water rippled again, only this time it was followed by a loud splash as the creature seemed to move from its rocky perch. The urge to look at what just happened was overwhelming. Her lungs were like a hurricane, and she could feel the rapid beat of its heart as it tried to thump its way out of her chest. Every other sound meant nothing as the agonizing, least long seconds drew on. Even the creature's movements through the water disappeared as time went by, and finally, Starlight could resist no longer. Her head shot up to where she'd seen the beast, only now to see the empty rock wall, as was the rest of the cavern. Confusion had left her for a moment, as terror soon began to boil within her veins. She jumped over her cover and moved to the uh, cave center, keeping an eye on every possible entrance. Still, the darkness remained not but darkness, and Starlight's racing heart began to slow. She could only assume it hadn't seen her. Maybe it was gone and she was free. No, she wasn't so naive. She knew it was still here somewhere, and she wasn't going to give it a chance to do to her what it had done to her friends. She knew now for sure that it was no ghost, specter, or any sort of supernatural being. It was a real flesh-and-blood animal, a parasitic abomination that had violated all of her friends, and she owed it to them to destroy it once and for all. And that's when she saw it. Curled up in the watery shadows was a distant crown of blue light that marked what she knew must be the crest of its head. Starlight locked eyes onto the quivering maw, with its segmented orifices twitching and slowly parting. The thing looked right into her, seeing that she was on an inequian level that clearly didn't require eyes. Then its mouth opened wider, distending into a virtual ring of glistening black flangs as it gave a slow, clicking hiss. Starlight narrowed her eyes and lowered her horn as her blue magic flashed to life. The creature gave a loud shriek as it jumped up and charged right at her. This is for my friends, you monster! She called fiercely as a bolt of blue fire exploded from her horn, striking the creature down with a watery flash and a cloud of steam. Starlet looked up as the hissing fell silent, a wave of relief washing over her, the likes of which she'd never imagined. It was swiftly overcome by a wave of traumatic emotions that followed. First and foremost, she looked to where her attacker had fallen, only to see its rippling image reform as if there was no more than water. Then she froze. That was only water. It was only a reflection. There was a cold puff of breath upon the back of Starlight's trembling neck, and a sticky, wet slime trailed down her damp mane. 
She gasped, quivering eyes going wide. The sensation shifted and a slow hiss sounded right beside her left ear. A soft glowing blue caressed her face as it did so. She couldn't turn, run, or even scream as the barbed whip coiled around her and everything exploded into a painful, bright... The large wooden door of the ruined castle hung ajar as the small group of ponies approached. At the front of the group were three bouncing fillies that, despite their excitement at finally having a chance to come into the forest, bore hints of fear in each of their hearts. It had been at least a day since any of them had seen or heard from their friends or sisters, and worry was in no short supply. Behind them was a larger red stallion with an equally concerned look in his eye. In fact, none of the six or so ponies with them, or the fillies, looked to be all right. Applejack! Hey, Applejack! Sis, you in there? Applebloom called as she, Scootaloo, and Sweetie Belle entered the crumbling castle. The others calling for their sisters and idol, respectively. No response came from the deceptive structure, but a cold wind and each of the fillies looked back at the first two ponies that had followed them in with perplexed expressions. Don't be too loud, girls. We need to hear if anyone is calling for us. Miss Cheerily said as she looked at the overgrown balconies above wearily. Sorry, Miss Cheerily. Applebloom responded, but her frown was met with a small smile from her teacher. It's all right, Applebloom. I know you're worried. I am too. She responded as reassuringly as she could. I'm not. I know Rainbow Dash. It's totally up there spending the night out here. We'll find her and the others in no time, Scootaloo said, dismissing her concern with a hoof wave. Yeah, Rainbow maybe, but I can't imagine Rarity would you find all this dirt, Sweetie Belle added, scuffing at the overground floor with a hoof. No, don't none of y'all worry about it. Like Cheryless said, we'll find them, Big Mac added, earning an appreciative smile from the smaller mare as more town's ponies moved in behind them. Right. We should split up. Cover more ground. Every pony buddy up and pick a direction. Call out if you find anything. Shirley instructed, looking at the larger stallion beside her. Right. Can we come with you, Big Brother? Apple Bloom asked, looking up at Big Mac hopefully. The question drew the attention of the stallion and the school teacher, the latter appearing a little disheartened, but she smiled nonetheless as the former just nodded. Right. I'll take him. Meet you back here soon as we find something, Big Mac stated, then began towards the far side of the chamber with the fillies. I bet they all just caught up in some books or something. Remember the last time? Sweetie Belle said as the three of them walked along the ruined hall, Big Mac close behind. Sure, I'm a strange of them not to tell us nothing, though, Apple Bloom offered. Yet her attention was stolen as she noticed something shift in the corner of her eye. Off down to her right, a darkened hall... She thought she saw a faint flicker dart across the gloom, and she paused curiously as it disappeared from the shadows. Hey, do y'all see that? She called the others. Every pony stopped and looked, except for Scootaloo, whose eyes became focused on a small crevice on the other side of the hall. See what? Sweetie Belle asked, cocking her head in confusion as she tried to peer into the gloom. I don't know. It looked like some kind of light or something, only it was blue. Apple Bloom explained raising a hoof to her muzzle. Hey, you two, come take a look at this, called Scootaloo. But the orange Pegasus' words were lost on the others as Big Mac began down the side corridor with half bloom, that pointed out. Y'all stay right here, and don't leave them sight, you hear? The large red stallion instructed as she began towards the far end of the dark hallway. Both half bloom and Sweetie Belle nodded, but before they could say anything, they were trapped on the, tapped on the back by Scootaloo. Hey, didn't you hear me? Come look at these things, the Pegasus said excitedly, directing her friends over the small hole in the wall. All the while, Apple Bloom kept glancing back at her older brother as he peered around the corridor at the far end of the hall. Then she looked into the crevice Scootaloo had pointed out, along with Sweetie to see a set of three faintly glowing black orbs. Each of the strange spheres seemed to brighten at the presence, as if excited to see the three curious faces that peered back at them. What are they? Sweetie asked, but Scootaloo just shrugged. Meets me. But don't they look totally awesome? 
the Pegasus said eagerly. Meanwhile, Alpha Bloom took another look down the opposite hall, only to see that her brother had vanished. Cocking her head in confusion, she took a few steps forward. A particular scent drifted upon the air. Then, once again, the strange blue light flickered in the corner of her eyes. Oof, oof, oof! I think that one just moved! Sweetabelle squeaked, pointing a hoof as one of the glowing orbs shifted. What? Let me take a look! Scootaloo said as she pushed the aside Sweetabelle. And true to the unicorn's words, one of the orbs had shifted brightly. Hey! Apple Bloom! I'm taking another look! These things are so cool! Scootaloo called back. There was no response from the other filly. All that followed, Scootaloo's words was another violent shudder from one of the orbs as it peered down at its glowing heart with a fascinated interest. The light within flickered relentlessly once more, glowing brighter and brighter before it suddenly died altogether. Before finally the gleaming black surface of the orb split open 